This is going to be a complete start to finish DIY garbage disposal installation. Although I am a professional, I'm going to try to make it as user friendly as possible. When your garbage disposal starts leaking out the bottom, it's just time to replace it. And I would suggest that before you get started with any project that involves electricity, shut off the breaker panel or make sure that the switch is off and that no one's going to touch it. I'm going to be installing another generic half horsepower disposal. It's very similar to a Badger. I think it's just an off brand one. Uh, start off by removing your trap and get a nice bucket under there because there will always be a little bit of water left in the trap. Uh, once the trap is off, then you can start removing the dishwasher if you have one. You'll notice here that there is a high rise loop. Uh, it's important to maintain that when you reinstall it. If you don't know what a high rise loop is, hit the subscribe button. I've got a couple videos on explaining how that works and why it's very important. With that out of the way, uh, you have the option to either do the electrical or take the disposal down. Uh, if you're just plugged in, go ahead and unplug it. This one is hardwired, so it's a little easier to work on once it's out. There's a little ring up here that lefty loosey, righty tighty. Just loosen it up and then you can set it off to the floor. It's gonna be a very similar process if you're going to reuse the cord on your disposal. Uh, there's a little screw that will expose the wires that uh, they'll have some wire nuts or some crimped connectors inside of there. Uh, just fish them out with your hands, undo the connectors, and then you can unscrew the wire and get them out of the way. It's a good idea at this point, if you wanna be super safe, you can check and make sure there's no voltage with a pen uh, or a voltmeter. I trust my voltage pen pretty uh, confidently. Now you'll notice here somebody used the incorrect connector on this uh, shielded cable, this armored cable. I uh, think this connector, if I'm not mistaken, would have been for hard pipe. Uh, so I'm going to not reuse this and put a proper Romex connector on there. Um, that's going to secure it a lot better. When taking out the wire, it helps to sort of push the wires uh, on one side as you're pulling with the other. You wanna try not to put too much friction against the insulation. Uh, that way you don't have to re-strip the wire and shorten anything. And if you do nick the wire, it's a good idea to either at least put some electrical tape over the places that you nick it or to strip the wire and start over. I like to take my old garbage disposal and put it in the box of the new one and just set it off to the side once I get everything out of the way. Now we're gonna be replacing this part that connects to the sink so I can show you how it's done. You don't have to replace this if it's in good condition and not leaking, but I think it adds to a nice touch uh, just start everything fresh because sometimes it's all stained and nasty like this one was. So you just loosen up all of these screws and then there's a locking ring that goes around it that uh, you're gonna need to pop off in order to remove the thing completely. You'll see here where I grab a flathead screwdriver and there's a little notch where that's kind of like a weak point for this thing. You just stick your screwdriver and kind of pry down on it and this little locking ring is gonna slip off and it's gonna allow you to take the rest of these connectors off so that you can remove it out the top. Once you're up top, just go ahead and reach in there, grab it out, and there should be some leftover putty. Or if you're unlucky, somebody used silicone on it, and you're gonna need to clean up the silicone in order to get a, crest, a good seal on the new one. You can use a putty knife or a box cutter or just your fingernails, whatever you wanna do. The cleaner the connection is, the less of a chance that you're gonna have a leak when you go back to put the new one in place. So I like to go back over with a sponge or with a tissue or a paper towel, just get any of that old plumber's putty off of there that you can, that way you don't have anything interfering with a seal on the new one. Now we have to do basically the same thing on the new part. Um, we have to remove the locking ring and you have to loosen up all of these screws in order to get it out. It's kind of a big pain in the butt here in order to get ready to prep this thing uh, with plumber's putty and put the new one back in place. Now it's recommended in the instructions that you use at least a three quarter inch uh, rope around the entire thing. I'm using some stain free plumber's putty. It's not super important that you use stain free on this type of a sink, but uh, it's pretty much all I carry now so that uh, I don't run into trouble when I'm dealing with granite or 
some other types of like white sinks that you could potentially leach some oils into it. So just roll it up like you were playing with Play-Doh and mash it around, trying to make it as even as possible and then stick it lightly down inside of there. And then a trick here is to set a paper towel on top and throw something heavy on it. You can throw the garbage disposal box or you, in my case, uh, my tool bag is much heavier. So it'll just help us when we're attaching the locking ring down below. At this point, it's not a bad idea to just get comfortable because it can be a little difficult to get this thing up if you haven't done it before. You gotta put the friction paper washer first and then the metal one and then goes your, um, the one that has the screws and the locking ring. And you sort of just kind of wrap this thing around starting in the back uh, of the ring opposite of where the gap is and then you can kind of snap it in place and that's what's gonna hold it there while you put your screws there. This is also why it's important to put the weight on top because you have to kind of put a little pressure and if you have nothing weighing it down, you're gonna mess up your plumber's putty. Alternatively, if you had a helper, you could have them hold it in place um, and now these screws are gonna to need to go all the way up but you're not gonna to wanna to over tighten them because then you put too much pressure against that locking ring. It's really a bit of a balance here you just got to kind of feel it once you've tightened them and when you when you the bracket's not moving anymore you know you've got it tight enough um, and you can always tighten a little bit more so i would err on the side of a little bit looser that way you don't over tighten something and you can always go back and tighten some something a little bit extra now i'm going to use a big flathead here to get a really good grip um, and make sure that i get these screws really tight i'm also doing it evenly I don't know if that's really necessary, but I think it helps the plumber's putty seat better if you go like a little bit at a time each screw. And it's just what I do. Um, you know, maybe other people do it differently. After I think I got the screws tight enough, I'm gonna feel it and just make sure that it's not moving anywhere. You know, and you can tell this thing ain't going anywhere, so you know you've got it tight enough. You can remove the weight off the top, and you'll see that if you've done it correctly. There should be a plenty of plumber's putty that has squeezed out. So you can just remove all that with your fingers. Some people get real picky with it and they'll take a little tiny thermostat screwdriver or something and scrape off all the extra. I usually use my fingernails at the end of it. Um, some people like to use gloves with plumber's putty, but this stain-free stuff I don't feel like really damages my skin very much. Now I like to prep the garbage disposal as much as possible before I put it in uh, to the bottom of the sink. And we have a dishwasher here, so this is super important. You need to knock out this plug. This is what causes a lot of floods when DIYers install garbage disposals. They don't read the instructions and they forget to knock out this plug. Just get yourself a big flathead screwdriver and a pair of channel locks and knock the heck out of this thing. And remember to take out the plug from inside uh, because if you don't, you're gonna leave a big piece of plastic in there for your new garbage disposal to chomp up and it's just gonna be you know, hot and melty and messy. I don't know why this styrofoam was a little bit all over the place. So I'm just trying to clean it up around the garbage disposal connection or around the uh, dishwasher connection so it makes a good seal. As you get your splash guard there, uh, you can make sure you can sometimes people like to cut up the splash guard a little bit um, so that it allows more water to go down. I like to leave it because it helps to um, uh, keep food debris out of the garbage disposal. And I wanted to show you there that there are no blades inside of these garbage disposals. It's just like a little cheese grater on the side and the knuckles in the middle knock the food over to the side in order to be ground up. I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, wire um, ready here and get my new Romex connector installed. Um, it's a, I believe it's a half inch connector on these things. I think there's a knockout. You could put a bigger one if you need to. You don't need the inner ring. Uh, I just screw it onto this thing and that's gonna be enough. You don't need to lock the inner ring if that's a bit overkill. Now you see here, I usually uh, do this, and I did this on this time, although I had to undo it uh, because of the way somebody installed the P-trap, but typically you can save yourself a little bit of headache and get this uh, tailpiece installed uh, before you hang the garbage disposal up. It's like the more you can do when the garbage disposal's in complete control, it'll just make the job a little bit easier, but you'll see in a little bit here why I ended up having to undo this thing after I had already put it in place, which didn't really take much more time. Yeah, you don't need to go over tight on the screws. You'll know when you get these things tight, they, they won't screw in anymore. Uh, now, if you're in a commercial building uh, like this one, uh, you've got armored cable and you'll need to install these little uh, short guards. Uh, I call them redheads. I'm not sure what the actual name is, but whoever installed this before did not add one of these things. 
but I have them so I went ahead and added it in and then I try to bend this wire since it's a solid wire bend a little kind of like a U in it so that way when you fish it in there it's gonna be a little easier to grab with your fingers or a pair of pliers and you got to stick this thing all the way through the connector so that you can screw it in uh, it's a bit frustrating uh, you'll see here it takes me a couple minutes to get it done um, and then when uh, when you get it in, you can reinstall your uh, wire nuts, which I recommend just using new wire nuts. Um, the wire nuts are technically reusable, but uh, they're super cheap. Just use some new wire nuts. So I've got the cable all the way inside uh, where I'm gonna be able to good, get, get a good bite on it with these screws for the connector. And uh, I believe that the reason why this doesn't have a ground is because this armored sheath around the wire actually acts as the ground. If you're in a different style of, style of installation, you may need to use the ground screw. Um, or if you're installing a plug, there's a little green screw in there that you're not gonna see me use. It's because of this type of wire. It doesn't come with a, uh, an extra ground wire. And on new installations, technically, according to the new, I think 2020 code, you're supposed to have these things on a GFCI protected circuit, which this one is not. I'm gonna to talk to the homeowner about potentially installing one uh, in their breaker panel. Uh, since this one is hardwired, I wouldn't really put a GFCI under the sink. I, I think that's a, a bit <laughs> too much work. Who wants to be working under the sink and installing a GFCI? If I could get away with it at the breaker panel, I will. Now, when you're installing wire nuts, uh, you can hold the wire so that it doesn't keep twisting around itself and it's gonna give you a good connection on it. Uh, a lot of people like to twist them with pliers first to make sure they get good connections. I've never had any problems just putting the wire nuts on directly. Unless it's very large gauge wire, you should be able to get away with just using some yellow or some orange wire nuts here um, and just holding the wire tight and twisting them. When I go to push the wires up into the garbage disposal, I always like to point the wire nuts facing up. That way, in case something does leak down in the future, it doesn't leak down and sit inside of the wire nuts. It's just a preference. I don't think it's really a big deal, but you'll see here where I'll try to twist the wire nut and just uh, push them all the way up as much as I can. Uh, just a preference. I don't think I don't think you have to do that. Um, a lot of you guys are probably going to be installing the plugs, which is the same thing. You know, you're just going to plug it into the wall when you're done after making these connections. There's a little cover plate after you get everything in. Just one screw. This thing only goes in one way. So if you're not putting it in the right way, it's not going to work. Just tighten the screw up and you are basically ready to set this thing in place. Uh, the sort of ring around the garbage disposal, you need to pull it up as far as possible before you lift it up. Sometimes they come all the way pushed down and you're not going to be able to reach it. Once you get it in place, there's three little hooks on this thing. I wouldn't recommend tightening it super tight now until you know where the position of the garbage disposal is going to be based on your trap. Uh, before you put your trap in, you can put your washing machine connection back uh, it's you know again the inverted loop is very important here you don't want your garbage disposal hose sagging on the ground you want it strapped up about 30 inches off the ground if possible I'm gonna freeze the frame here on this trap I went ahead and screwed on the back nut and you can see how this uh, trap is not installed so that the drain is level it was giving me a lot of trouble putting this thing together so I took it back and off a couple times so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take off the tailpiece from the garbage disposal and install that first uh, in order to make this thing work without having to re-glue a PVC trap. So you, you take it off and then you can stick it inside of here and you can figure out where you need to cut this thing. This is going to be too long for the way that they have this thing set up. Uh, everybody's trap is going to be a little bit different. Uh, you know, hopefully you don't have a whole lot of work to do on that. But basically, you got to keep playing with it until it works. And sometimes you do have to shorten these things uh, depending on the configuration of your drain. So after I shortened it, it was just a matter of sort of, you know, moving this thing around in order to get it into the perfect position where I'm able to kind of pull it a little bit with the screws. Ideally, it would have been better to cut the inch and a half drain line and maybe glue another coupling on there so I could straighten out uh, the trap. But I wanted to try it like this and I would, I ran a bunch of water down after this and nothing was leaking. So, you know, I'm fine with it if nothing's leaking. 
Uh, they also have a water alarm system in this place and I leave a paper towel when I'm done to make sure that nothing is going to leak when I leave. Just keep making small adjustments until you get this thing to the point where you're going to be able to put the screws in and it's not putting too much pressure back and forth. Uh, everything's plastic here so it, it can give you a little bit of play. You don't have to worry about this too much. Okay, and with the uh, screws back in, uh, you want to make sure both of your nuts on your trap are tight. You don't need pipe dope, you don't need Teflon, you don't need wrenches, uh, you just need hand tight on all these things. You want to do a, a good leak check on it, fill up the garbage disposal with water, dump the water down, and check for leaks like crazy. Do this a bunch of times, then you can turn on your power and uh, run the disposal and you're basically done. If you have any questions or run into trouble when you're installing yours, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you learned something. And thanks for watching.